When a manned submarine reaches its implosion depth, the consequences are fatal. Today we take a look at what happened to the passengers when their submarine reached the depth of destruction. There are two critical crushing depths underwater. The depth that engineers say is the limit for diving, and the depth at which a submarine actually implodes. In the case of Ocean Gate's Titan, the limit depth where it could not resist more pressure is 4,000 meters, but now we know that it has been destroyed before reaching that depth. In fact, the maximum it could have descended is 3,800 meters, in the seabed where the remains of the shipwreck are located. There are several hypotheses of why it is believed that the submarine did not hold up this time, when it had already made multiple trips to the remains of the Titanic, without suffering technical failures. The one that has the most support and credibility is that of director of Titanic and Avatar himself, James Cameron, who designed his own submarine with the help of Australian engineers, and now holds the record for the deepest voyage into the Mariana Trench, the deepest point in the ocean at about 11,000 meters below sea level. Apart from having descended to the remains of the Titanic more than 30 times, according to Cameron and confirmed by the Submersible Regulations Bureau, carbon fiber, the material with which the submersible's main hull was built, doesn't have the necessary specs to withstand thousands of pounds of pressure per square inch, as thick as it may be. Even though they made it five inches thick, although very strong, it's still a composite material and doesn't have the same lifespan as titanium and hardened steel, which was used on Cameron's Deep Challenger. That's why with each trip, it weakened to the point where it could no longer resist, and once cracked it ended up disintegrating, like a piece of ultra-tempered glass under millions of tons of pressure. Sadly, the Titan sub disintegrates in a fraction of a second, turning into scrap metal, just as the signal to the mothership is lost, and communication with the polar ship on the surface is cut off. Pipes and accessories begin to fail as the carbon fiber hull with titanium parts crackles, signaling structural failure. As the hull rattles and creaks before collapsing, the implosion disintegrates everyone on board in one millisecond. Instead of slowly seeping in, the water rushes, either trapping air in a bubble at one end of the submersible or generating so much heat that the hull implodes, killing everyone inside. Body parts are among the rubble rising upward and now lying just a few feet from the Titanic. Very chilling, but yet comforting knowing that the pain or suffering was minimal and it all unfolds so fast that the nerves aren't fast enough to send signals to the brain for them to feel it. It's basically like a Thanos snap. To put it bluntly, the crew became kind of like a human sauce in the blink of an eye. The anatomy behind this is that it takes time for information like pain to travel through your nerves to the brain and be processed. In the case of pain, it takes approximately 100 milliseconds, that is 99 milliseconds more than the implosion took. The incredible thing is that it takes 13 milliseconds to process visual images, which means they disappeared before realizing what they saw. There were five people in the Titan submersible. Suppose they weigh 80 kilos each. That means that there are about 400 kilos of remains that have to go somewhere. So why do they say they won't find them? Well, first we must take into account the heat because the submersible produces a giant air bubble inside. The pressure compresses that air. And when that happens, it heats up to approximately the temperature of the sun, about 5,000 degrees Celsius. The time of exposure is not enough to melt the remains of metals and other materials but any living being would be immediately reduced to a paste, being expelled at an extremely high speed, becoming available as food for other living beings. Although it sounds horrible, is where at some point we are all going to end up.